welcome to the DTC Insider Podcast, where online business owners come to find actionable tips and tactics to grow their businesses. Now, here's your host, Brian Roizental. Hey, welcome to another episode of the DTC Insider Podcast. I'm Brian Roizental, your host, and today I'm going to interview Jules Wellnon and Stacy Pierce. They are married to each other and they are the founders of OME Gear and investors, sorry, inventors of The Wonder. They are hosts of Do It In Nature podcast and men, they have done many things. They are, to name a few, authors of a children's book called Rescued by Rico. They were on America's Big Deal TV show pitching their product and won. They recently gave a TEDx talk on giving up your stuff and not your dream. And of course, I'm going to ask them about that. And to me, at least, the most important thing is that they love what they do and love uh, getting to do it together. So it's a pleasure to have you both here, Jules, Stacy. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much, Brian. This is such an honor. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. We're excited to talk with you. Yeah, me too. I mean, you have definitely a pretty interesting story. So before going into that, why don't you tell the audience more about your company? Sure. You want me to take that? So our company is called OME Gear. So it stands for Oceans plus Mountains equals Earth Gear. And honestly, where we got that name is I used to have a company that was um, titled a name after the beach and we would go to trade shows and it was a version of the product we have now, but people would come to up to our booth at the trade shows and say, oh, I don't live near the beach. I don't need that. But we were like, no, but it's for so much more than the beach. And so when we started this new company, we said, you know what, let's give it a name that kind of encompasses any outdoor activity. So we named it Oceans, Mountains, Earth. So that's the that's kind of the name or the reason behind the name of the company. But our company, our flagship product is a transforming unit for the outdoors. So it's five products in one, five quality products in one. It's a cart that hauls up to 150 pounds of gear. And then once you unload it, it easily transforms into a high camping chair, a low beach chair, a lounge chair that reclines, and a camping cot. And it comes with wheels that are incredible for any terrain, including soft sand. They don't require air, and they roll awesome on soft sand. So that's our flagship product. That's awesome. So Thank you. how did you uh, come up with the idea? I know it goes way back. So I'd love for you to tell more about it to the audience. Yeah, actually, it's a it goes back to 1998. Um, and Jules's parents were sitting on the beach and on the boardwalk of Bethany Beach, Delaware, and saw a mom struggling on the beach with three kids at the end of the day. And kids were screaming and crying. And of course, the mom was lugging all the stuff. And it was just a nightmare. And Jules's parents, they had, I mean, Jules has five brothers and sisters, so six kids in all. Um, so they knew the struggle. And and um, so they were like, the beach shouldn't be this hard. Mm-hmm. The beach is a free place for people to go. Most beaches are. And you, you, you know, it should be an activity that the family can go and have fun. And it t- ends up just being a nightmare for the person hauling all the stuff. So they went up and back into their condo and tapped and sketched a three in one, or I mean, a two in one kind of dolly that um, would kind of transform into a, a lounge chair, a big plastic um, Frankenstein looking thing. Now, you know, it was cool then, but they got patents on it, but they just never knew how to take it to market. They didn't know how the money, know how that was way before Google. Um, and then, but they also had a bakery that they were focusing on too. That was their, you know, bread and butter. So um, uh, mom Weldon was like, all right, we're done. We're done with this. So, um, so fast forward a few years later, uh, Jules was working um, at a, as a consultant at a big, one of the big consulting firms and just really needed something to call her own. You know, you get tired of working for someone else. And, and uh, so that's when she called up her mom or her, her dad and asked her dad to, if he would allow her to take his idea and transform it to something else and and take it to market. And of course, here we are, we'll fast forward a few more years. Here we are uh, many years later and with the wonder of now being a five-in-one transformable unit 
um, that we're taking to market. I mean, while you were mentioning the 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 thing about the the situation in the beach, you know, the the tough situation for the one you know carrying all the stuff. I was picturing myself in my last vacation because I have twins, three year old, a boy and a girl. And of course, uh, with, with my wife, we, we go to the beach uh, in the summertime, of course, and we really enjoy going to the beach. But as you said, it is actually a nightmare to take things from the car to or to the apart from the apartment to the beach and back. Uh, sometimes we do, you know, two, um, we, we do it like two times. Like uh, first we take the kids, then some stuff, and sometimes a third trip to the beach to, you know, <laughs> Uh, pick up the, the rest of the things so <laughs> I can totally so, that. we hear that all the time Brian all and the time. so people are frustrated before they even get onto the beach right and so we're like you know what let's solve that problem with an all-in-one solution of the wander we had some I mean uh, piggybacking on that um, we had some friends that they would get to the beach and someone would get up at six o'clock in the morning um, and I don't know who would do it, but they would get up and go find their place on the beach, set up the tent, do all this stuff. They would take five trips back and forth because they, for the whole family. Uh, so it'd be like one or two people at six o'clock in the morning going and setting up everything. So all they had to do was bring down the kids when it was time to bring down the whole family. Yeah. Uh, so it was like, oh my gosh, first of all, our, our hauler, because it will transform into a hauler can make that those five trips into one trip you carry your tent yeah. and everything down uh they called us they're like y'all this was a game changer we didn't have to get up at six o'clock in the morning they they still did because they wanted to get their spot on the beach but they were like it was one trip down we had everything up we got to go and have breakfast with our kids and then bring the kids down it was perfect so and at the end of the day it was that simple to get off the beach yes yes i can already feel it yes <laughs> it's one of those places that when you're working in the city, let's say, or in the office or home, uh, you picture it as, a, as a relaxing place. It's like you go, you you relax, you know, but when you when you go to the beach, it's a lot of stress. And when you go from the beach back home, it's a lot of stress as well if you don't have yeah. like this, right? So I can totally relate to that. So please tell me now, uh, how do you validate the idea? I'm always curious about this because the innovation story, I mean, or that the innovation could be great, that the invention, let's say, could be great, but how do you know whether people want it or not? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a great question. How do you validate a product, right? And I would say the way that we validated it is um, we went online and did 12, I mean, 12 years, and I, I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but of research. So we looked at customer reviews for products that were currently out there, like wagons or chairs or cots or any of the individual products that our company, that our the Wanderer is. And we said, what are the negative reviews? What are the things that the people are saying they don't like, right? One, cheap quality. A second one, the wheels don't work. Like I'm literally feel like I'm dragging a piano through the sand. Um, three, the third thing is I have to carry so much stuff to kids sporting events or tailgating or the beach or whatever the activity is. And so we were like, okay, well, what if we can combine all of those things into one quality product, then we know we're speaking to the problem that's the problems that are already there. So that's really kind of how we validated it. Okay. Yes. It's something we, we always recommend to people we talk to, right? Uh, or whether we work with them or not, we we tell them that we need to start by identifying their, you know, ideal customer profile and not, I, and the big mistake there is that everyone knows who their customers are, right? It's like, yeah, I know, I know, I know who they are, of course. And when you ask them about the details, they tell you the demographics. They say, oh, they are, let's say, or men or women between 18 and 65 years old. So it's like, uh, that's not your ideal customer profile. So who are they? What do they value? Have you read your competitors' reviews? Have you read your own reviews, the good, the bad, the ugly? Have you have you gone through that process? And many times 
most people who create something new try to solve a problem that doesn't exist because they didn't do their research to actually uh, come up with yeah. something that solves a problem, right? So yeah. it sounds straightforward, but it's something, something that many entrepreneurs miss, right? Yeah, I would say too, you know, it's crazy. Um, everything you're saying, I'm totally agreeing with. And so we um, we have gone viral on TikTok as of the last week. Um, and we've got a, multiple videos that are over a million views. And the comments on it are just, honestly, they're insane. Like you can immediately tell who's your target market and who's not, right? I mean, people are saying, oh, $3.99 is way too much for this product. But then you've got a whole other group of people that are going, it's only $3.99? Mm -hmm. Like for five quality products in one with that wheels, with wheels that actually do what they promise. And so you just immediately know, okay, you're looking for products. This certain group is looking for, you know, $40 beach chairs from Walmart that they'll use once, you know, one season or two and throw away and then buy it again. But our target market is not that like our target market cares about three things, convenience, quality, and innovation, mm -hmm. right. And the outdoors, obviously. And so those are the people it's become very clear and it's, it's a pretty straight split between male and female. That's, you know, I mean, both kind of value those different things. Um, but yeah, it's, it becomes really clear as you get into it, who your target market is. And you have to have thick skin on, on TikTok because woo, those people can be, um, can be haters for sure. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't get on TikTok and read the, uh, read it. I can't do it. She has the thicker skin of the relationship. She's like a turtle back. I'm not, um, but I will say it's also it, um, it's almost an even split too on the activities that people do too. It's pe just it's not people just going to the beach, because it's a camping cot um, and it's a camping chair. So people are, are who are car camping or they're they're not necessarily going like hiking and camping, um, but campers or um, festival goers. Uh, hunters, hunters, mm, that's crazy. and so it's really an even split on the activities. Mm -hmm. It's just not on the coast that people are buying them. It's all over the United States, um, going to the lake or whatever. So anytime people need to haul something and have a seat or a sleep when you get there, that's that's kind of where we're seeing it. Yeah, yeah. So first, congrats on going viral. That's that's great. Uh, <laughs> Second, I know it's uh stuff is uh tough to read the bad reviews, uh, Stacy. So uh, I know, I mean, I'm like you, it's it's tough. We we need to go through that, at least one of you, right? But uh, you don't need to suffer. I mean, both of you, you don't need to both suffer, That's right? right. <laughs> That's okay. One of you is enough, right? One of you is enough. <laughs> yeah, I'll take one yeah and, I, and I was going to say that something, uh, many things you said, um, I, I, I wanted to, to highlight two of them because all of, all of them were interesting to me. One is the fact that uh, I think that identifying who love you and who hate the product, or not you, probably the, let's say the product, who loves and hates the product, it's important because if you, if nobody hates you, probably you're not identifying who your product is not for or, or who is not part of a target audience, right? So who to avoid targeting, who to avoid marketing to, who to many things, right? And you can focus on people that values that. And on the second hand, you, you mentioned the price point, right? And I guess that the, the price could be high or it could be low, um, depending whether uh, it solves. I mean, I think it depends on the size of the problem that you have, right? So if you feel that the the, the problem is big enough and, and bigger, way bigger than the price you're paying, I think it's a bargain. As you said, only $3.99. But if the if the problem you're solving or the perceived problem they are solving for those people is is smaller, they'll say, oh, it's super expensive, right? And I guess that's why those people are not part of your audience, anyways, right? Because they don't have a big enough problem. It's that and so them. that's a great it's a great point, Brian. I think that you know those same people that would just rake us over the coals for the fact that we would charge $3.99 and quote unquote pat our pockets, which is a joke because if anybody had any clue how expensive manufacturing is these days and shipping and um, and getting a design to the point that we've gotten it, I mean, it's we're certainly not patting our pockets, but 
besides the fact if they um those same people who said i would spend i would pay 75 dollars max those same people have a 600 dollars tv right a 50 inch or 48 whatever inch tv in their house and they have a 700 dollars iphone and they have a whatever and so it's it's fine i mean my response to them is maybe this product just isn't for you and that's okay right i mean there's no need to hate, just keep scrolling. I mean, there's there's no need to be ugly about it, but we spend money. All of us do. We spend our hard earned money on what we value. Right. And so it's like, you're saying, how big is your problem? And do you value spending that money towards solving that problem? If you sit in your house and you don't ever go into the outdoors yeah. And you don't really have a voice to say whether or not this is a good price point, right? Because you'll never use this product. So we're learning a lot. I, I don't, I, the funny thing is, is I do have tough skin, but I also don't really like also welcome the negative feedback because it's all, it's all feedback to help us be better. Mm-hmm. And so while I don't love to hear it, if I hear it through the right lens, it'll only make us better. And well, so- that's using discernment between the bullies they just want to sure. just want to be mean and, there are a lot and, of those. The, and there's a lot of those and the people that are given honest feedback. Yeah. But if people know the truth, we did not go up on our prices, even though our shipping costs went from six thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars for, for a container load from. So China. we never passed on that those costs to our, our um, customer. So while you're complaining about us patting our pockets. I promise you we're not. We ate all that where if you go to the grocery store, you can't even get a bag of groceries for less than a hundred dollars these days um, or any other products that, mm-hmm. that are out there. I mean, everything is so Everything's expensive. Crazy right now. Um, and, and not one time have we gone up at all. And in our, in our products, it comes in a big box. We only charge $25 for shipping just to help us out with that. You know, it's not like we're charging a lot of money, what it really costs. And so, so we feel like that we, we, we have it at a fair price for what it it is and the quality it is. Um, And we've just tried to keep that price standard across Mm -hmm. instead of going um, up on the cost because we could, Um, we certainly could. Yes. I think it's important to know, as uh, you said, Jules, it's important to know which feedback to incorporate and do something about it and which feedback to ignore not because you don't want not because it's negative feedback necessarily but it's coming from somebody who doesn't belong to your target audience so many i think that many entrepreneurs get caught up in the or or fall into the trap of making or changing business uh, ideas or decisions, let's say, based on feedback from people who are not a part of their target audience. And in this case, for example, if they hear about the price, uh, the price point being too high, they would say, oh, let's decrease the price point because people are complaining about the the, the price, right? And it's not the a problem that you need to fix, right? It's right. just that you need to be clear on the fact that it's not for everyone. And those who don't have this big enough problem are not going to value the product. Yeah. 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 Now I know we've been talking about great stuff so far and you have a great story indeed, but not everything is, you know, happy moments such as going viral or, or winning, uh, you know, in a TV show. I know that in order to be successful many times, not always, but many times you need to go, all in and going all in uh, means different things for different people. What does that mean to you? Hmm. You want to take that one? I mean, it, it, I mean, I, I love that you just asked that question because we just did a TEDx talk on this whole that this whole question. Um, you know, we won't give you the eighteen minutes spill. We'll let people go and, and watch our TED talk. But we did. I mean, it, if, to us, all our all in was. Um, it was uh, December 2020. We, had, you know, obviously the world of COVID. Uh, I mean, the world shut down because of COVID, and it wasn't just us; it was the world. And uh, you know, we had a tough year that year. I mean, we were planning to hit the road. I mean, hit the ground going and 
2019 and then get into 2020 and the world shut down and we, um, our manufacturer went silent on us. We had to find a new manufacturer. Uh, we couldn't travel, couldn't, so I couldn't get over to our, our new manufacturer. Um, and just finding one was just a, a feat in itself, but uh, then, you know, trying to find, raise money and raise capital to keep our, our company going. We, we weren't one of the lucky ones that got in any of the um, PPP money or the ID, IEDL money. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we weren't able to get any of that because we only worked with contractors. We didn't have W two employees, and so you know it was trying to navigate and keep keep above water and bring in trying to you know do pitches and raise money. So at the end of two thousand twenty, uh, Jules looked at me and and said, you know, how much do you believe in this? And of course, I was like, I believe in this one hundred percent. And the only asset we had left, we had closed out all of our um, 401ks and maxed out all of our credit cards. And the only asset we had left for it was our home. And she goes, I think we just need to sell our home. And so that's, I was like, okay, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't let, let me think about it. It was an immediate, yes, I agree with this because we do believe in this. And, and we put a lot of work in, in our own, in our own personal finances into it. And so that's what we did. We sold our house and um, but um, when you sell your house in the in the up market or however they say it in the real estate world, you don't realize it's going to sell that quick. And we didn't have a plan B, um, and so um, it sold with, really before we put it on the market. But it sold within four days, um, and for full asking. And so we're like, okay. So we had to take that money and buy our product because our main we couldn't pay our manufacturer. That's why we had to do it. And he had hid our product in a warehouse in Utah. And so we couldn't get to our product to, to fulfill the orders that we had had on our Kickstarter that we funded on and everything and any kind of pre-order, other pre-orders we had had. So that's the reason why, why we, we felt like we needed to do it. Um, and so, yeah, so then we, um, we were like, okay, what are we going to do now? And that's when we were like, like, the only thing we can do is finance an RV. The only thing we really could afford uh, was to finance an RV. And we wrapped it in our branding and we hit the road for two years and just really traveled around the United States selling our product and getting the word out. I mean, we were in a traveling billboard. We had QR codes all over it. So people riding down the road and you would see our website spike and sales come in and um you know so we traveled we lived in rv parks for two years and and that's what we did so um so we sold uh, right around probably 95 percent of our stuff uh we don't have much left uh so you know other than the really the clothes that we took on the road and a couple pieces of furniture that were special to us but that's it Wow, I mean, I'm almost uh, speechless because although I already knew the story, I'm 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 still, you know, shocked by the fact of you know I I, I tried to put myself in your shoes, and it's great that you believe in your in your company that much, but I cannot even imagine how you felt the the day you decided to go for it to actually do it right because now is. I don't know if in the past, but it's not currently happening as we speak, right? But why? What did you feel back then when when it was happening, right? When you had a lot of questions more than answers. I, I Brian, I love that question because I've not really thought about it like this before, and so it's sort of forcing my mind or inviting my mind to go to a place when you're in the middle of. I'm going to just call it trauma because for us, it was where we were literally having to put out fires and solve problems in the moment. And that's a lot of entrepreneurs that we've talked to. That's their story. When you're in the middle of that, you don't think about it. You just do it. Like you just somehow dig down a little deeper when you thought you couldn't dig down anymore you find that there's another layer you can go a little bit deeper, right? And so we just kind of, it, it's it's a little bit like the frog in boiling water where if you throw the frog in, the frog will jump right back out. But if you gradually, you know, get the frog used to the water, it will stay in and die. And so hopefully we don't die. <laughs> but, um, but in reality, 
this company is it's not just about a company to us. It's certainly not just about a product. OMA Gear is about a calling for us to create a platform for influence because we believe that if we can build a company that's successful and people take notice of and all of that, that that will afford us a platform to be, be able to really create change that we want to see in this world, right? The whole be the change that you want to see in the world. And so for us, knowing that we've been called to this gives us the inability to walk away. Mm -hmm. And so whether we would have liked, I mean, how many times would either one of us have liked to have just said, you know what, forget it. Like this is way too hard. I, I can't even tell you how many times there were, but we've got this little philosophy of the little red wagon where there are some times where I just need to sit in the little red wagon because I'm done. Like if it weren't for her, I would walk away, right? And then vice versa for her. And so in those moments, she pulls me or when she needs to sit in the wagon, I pull her. And so that's the value of a really solid partnership. And thankfully we have that. We've been gifted that. And we recognize that every day, honestly. Um, but for me, when you're, and, and I certainly wouldn't compare us to being in war or, you know, like real, real trauma, um, but for us to our level of it, you don't get to go, oh man, this is really hard. You just have to keep solving the problem and then solve the next problem and then solve the next problem. So when Stace talked about selling our home, that solved the problem of getting our product back to keep our company alive. But we didn't solve the problem until we had to of, okay, so what do we do next if we sell our home, right? Some people think that's foolish thinking. Because it's like, you're not planning for the future. You're not. But as entrepreneurs, a lot of times you don't get that luxury. Like you just have to solve one problem and then solve the next problem and then solve the next problem. And that often creates a lot of stress. But that's what we've chosen. Yeah. And I'll add to that. I mean, when when we did it, I mean, I, I agree with Jules. We, we were literally went on autopilot and was like, okay, we have to do this to get to this, to get to this. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a, um, easy decision to move into an RV and travel. Um, mm -hmm. We were leaving our network. We were leaving our friends. We, we often um, compare ourselves to the Israelites in the Bible. Like we just went out and we were out into the wilderness by ourselves. And, and, and it was scary. Neither was one scary. of us had driven an RV or ridden in one. So we didn't, we didn't know anything about the RV world. That's a whole different world out there. Yeah. And the fact that you can get a license to drive an RV um, at 16 years old, a regular license and allows you it, to drive an RV. Yeah, you don't there's have to, no, no, nothing special. no special license. Uh, we, we did take driving lessons and Jules drove most of the time. I only parked it once um, <laughs> in, two and a, in two, two years, but I could drive it. I did take lessons just in case I had to drive it. But she cleaned out the pooper. That was her deal. <laughs> so, yeah. The poop so I, I got to, I, I'd rather drive, I think. Yeah. Uh, I got to take care of all the outside stuff, okay. which was fine. Um, and I was, I was okay with that, but you know, that was not an easy decision. And I am, a um, I'm a nester and mm -hmm. being in a, a, a place where it was built, I had no, um, I had no voice into, you know, what, what, where, when, where, you know, it just came manufactured. And, um, and so when I struggled with that, the, probably the first three months. Mm -hmm. I had to nest. I had to um, take that horrible, uncomfortable furniture that you, you know, that they put in RVs out. We needed to make it home and make it ours. And once that, that happened and I had a sense of home, mm -hmm. it, I was, I was better. Um, but it, it took a little toll on me for a little while. It knocked me down into a, um, I spiraled into a quite the depression that, um, you know, it's, you know, I mean, I just being honest and transparent that it was really hard for me to come out of until I was able to make it uh, a place where I was proud of, because mm -hmm. I really, really wasn't proud the fa of the fact that we had to sell our home. I mean, that's not a, a badge of honor, you mm -hmm. know, to me, it's just what we had to do. Um, and so, I, you know, and, 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 it, and it, it made us stronger. And I mean, it, I think it pushed our relationship to another level. 
um, where a lot of people, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I think a lot of people would have struggled in their relationship where it actually brought us closer together and, and made us rely on each other instead of other people more. Mm -hmm. I think it actually, of course, I don't have any way to prove this, but I think it actually helped that you were uh, partners in business as well, right? Because yeah. if you if you weren't, it's like tougher to say, hey, help my business. We need to sell the home. Yeah. Of course, you, you might love each, each other all you want, but it's like, hey, they probably should need to give up your, you know, this yeah. year or now uh, you can reason later but or get a job where all those comments entrepreneurs uh, all of us get at some point right from different people you know mm -hmm. why don't you get a job right um, so the the fact that you were in it together in business I think it actually made it easier for you to say it's a yes from both of us right I agree I agree yeah. yeah, and not everybody has the luxury and not everybody has the same story. Not everybody has the same potholes as we have, you know, or roadblocks or whatever. Um, but I think you're exactly right. And that we're both so supportive of each other and want to see this dream come true together. Mm -hmm. I mean, there that's that's a huge gift for that we have. Awesome. Let's talk about some wins now. I would love for you to tell me because, of course, you, you've been through tough times and that made you stronger. I mean, uh, going out of your comfort zone, even out of your, you know, as you said, your home, your nest and traveling the US for two years. I'm sure you learned a lot of stuff. And I know that you have experienced great successes in your uh, company as well. So why don't you briefly talk about them? I know you uh, were successfully founded on Kickstarter. You won on national TV. So could you please tell me, uh, I mean, probably not me, tell the audience why <laughs> uh, you did that, uh, some tips for them in case they want to go for it, uh, to be very prepared. What do you think that were the key ingredients that helped you su succeed at those uh, experiences? Hmm. Another great question. So um, we have experienced some incredible wins and we're every day. We're so grateful. We've won innovation awards at trade shows um, at big trade shows. Um, and so people have taken notice of our product. You've talked about the um, the TV show we were on. Um, it was called America's Big Deal. And um, that was a live pitching show. And so we actually um, we applied and they wrote back and said, um, thanks, but no thanks. We love your product, but it's just too expensive for our show. We have less expensive products that are gonna be on the show. And I mean, I think hundreds of thousands of people applied. They think they chose 40 total. Um, but when we got that email back that said, no, thanks, but no thanks, we said, oh man, we really feel like we're supposed to be on this show. And so when we got it, we sat down and wrote a response email and just said, we, we appreciate and respect your, your response and your decision, but if you would allow us, can we tell you why we would ask for you to reconsider? And so we gave all the answers that it's, you know, we're two 50 year old women, we're married to each other. Um, we're, we, we don't say no, like we don't take no for an answer. You know, I mean, we've created this innovative product and, and we're, we're in a man space in three, a male dominated space in three different ways, funding. So we've had to raise funds um, and significant funds, manufacturing and um, the outdoor industry. All of those are typically male dominated places. And so we sort of explained all that in the email. And three weeks later, we got an email back and said, congratulations, um, we want you on the show. And so we went on and we had to pitch live to all of America. And it was terrifying and exhilarating all at the same time. Um, and we won. And so what we won was the three judges, one was from Lowe's, one was from Macy's and the other was other one was from QVC. And they all, off, all offered us purchase orders of one was 125,000, the other two were 200 grand. Um, and so we had to choose which company we wanted to go with. And so we ended up choosing QVC and um, and so it's been, you know, it's been quite the journey of these wins because, you know, it's so funny, again, for entrepreneurs, it's like for every win we have, there's 20, like, 
holy crap, can we recover from this moments, right? Of like, ah, like 20 setbacks for every win. I mean, maybe it's even more than 20, but um, the wins, you have to stop and you have to celebrate those because when they come, they are gifts and they are morsels along the path to say, keep going, you're on the right path, Mm -hmm. you know? And so that's what we've done. And so um, a definite win was the TED talk that we just did and that just got published. Um, to be able to be up on that stage with the person that I, love, that I love most in this world, having built something that has captured the attention of people to allow us to be on the largest platform in the world is quite an honor, right? And so we don't miss those moments. We stop, we celebrate them. We are not prideful in a like, look at us way. We're prideful in a super like grateful, like humble, like, oh my gosh, like God has given these us these opportunities and we need to make the most of them. I want to add one in. <clears throat> we won a, an innovation award at the National Hardware Show and which that's, that's a place that we call home. And what that, that put us, um, that award was given was given to us by the United um, Inventors Association. With that, I mean, if if you don't know that group, if you're an inventor, it's a group that is well worth being a part of. Uh, the Chris and Carmine, the 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 leaders, pro- leaders of that organization, are just top notch, salt of the mm. earth gentlemen. Um, but that also opened up a door for us to be on a national speaking tour with the United Inventors Association. So we get to go and tell our story on platforms um, all over um, at different trade shows, but to other inventors. So we can we can be a resource for them as they move forward. And and Jules always says, and I, I love it, and I always steal it, um, is we get to help people fill in the potholes with rocks before they hit them. And so this is just another opportunity for us to get up there and just highlight those potholes that we can help people, you know, ride the bike. Yeah. 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 I love the fact that first you didn't take no for an answer and then you won. That's a great (laughs) step. Yeah, thanks. For for me as well, you know, that no does mean no. No means no. The way you asked or the timing was wasn't the right right so it's it's good to keep pushing and pushing and even if if they said no in the end probably the show was or the contest was um going to be repeated again or done again in the future apply again you know many it happens with the auditions for you know artists it happens to entrepreneurs when they are pitching uh to get investment and to in many other situations so it's important that you did that and it, it's great what happened later, of course. And then he said something about wins. And I have that deep, like deep down, really incorporated because I learned it the hard way as we entrepreneurs learn many, many stuff, right? The hard way. I used to have a, a, a startup. Uh, it was, uh, uh, we, we raised uh, funds from investors. It was, I think it was 2011. Uh, and we had it for two to three years. And we were young. I'm 35 now. I was, I don't know, 20 something. I was really, really young. And one relative, uh, my partner's sister, uh, gave us uh, uh, a champagne bottle to celebrate the big office opening and the startup uh, launch and et cetera. And then when we closed the office at the end of it, it was still there and opened, right? And that was something that got to us to my former partner and I is a dear friend to this day of mine and we said from now on we are going to celebrate every single win and for those listening what you said was great celebrating the big wins but also the small wins the everyday wins and I I, I have it right here because I I encourage my team at the agency to we have like the a daily huddle you know 15 minutes a day we don't talk about work. We just hung up and and see how everyone's doing. And then, of course, we have the 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 work related checks. But we want to see each other's faces every single day, at least for a few minutes, all of us. And we ask, "What's your win today? Do you know? Does anybody have 
a win today and a win we we try to let's say educate them on the fact that a win is not necessarily something as big as the wins that you mentioned because those are clear you know huge wins for you and congrats again on those but for those listening you know and for me as a reminder as well the 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 wins are also the small things that gets you through the day because one thing i learned from you know watching netflix and those tv shows is that some you know things will end eventually but the ride is what you enjoy and i know it's something that everyone says but it's really what happens you know season one is great season two is great then season three is not and then the 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 great finale is not that great anyways so every uh probably startup or every company is going to be sold or is going to end is going to whatever but if you don't enjoy the the ride and celebrate the wins even the smallest ones why do we do it right yeah well here here's an activity to do to figure out how to celebrate the small wins so we pick our nieces and nephews nephew up from school and they're ages five to nine and so we pick them up from school in the afternoon when we we're home visiting. And, and as soon as they get in the car, we do lollipop rides. So we hand them a lollipop, you know, just, you know, so whatever, we'll give them a treat. And we have, we ask what their wins were for the day. What were their high moments, their highs and their lows. And so it's through a child's eye, a high for them is getting to go to recess. That's a win for them or, you know, something like mm-hmm. that. And so it's really getting through the lens of a child to go, we, it is okay to celebrate even the smallest things mm. because it's sometimes a win for me is getting out of bed, you know, mm. oh, I did it. You know, so, I mean, we've been, I've been in that, 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 to that point where I'm like, at least I got out of bed and, and I made my bed. Um, and so to look through a child's lens of, what their 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 highs their wins are and what their lows are kind of pulls it into perspective of yes let's celebrate those small wins you know um like uh, I mean was something that Arnie said you know she had a fun treat in her that we put in her lunch box you know that that was a high for her and we celebrated that and mm-hmm. so it's it's like think about what your a child would say and celebrate even the smallest things mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah, it happens to me every day with my kids. So I can totally relate to that. Mm-hmm. So uh, we talked about the past. Now it's time to briefly talk about the future before you go. What's next for the company and for you guys? Hmm. Well, we are, um, we're in the process of waiting on a really large investment to close. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully maybe even by the time this airs, it will have closed for us. And that will be sort of a game changer. We've been waiting for a while and um, it's it's been tough on us to kind of wait on that. However, it's showed us what we're made of and it showed us how much uh, kind of chutzpah, you know, that we have to be able to not give up and keep going. Um, but once that investment comes in, then all bets are off and we're off to the races um, or maybe all bets are on. Um, But um, we'll ramp up, you know, be able to ramp up our manufacturing and um, start rolling out new products that we have. Um, We have a bunch of new products in the, in the roadmap that we're really excited about. Um, But one of the things that Stace and I are wanting to do is to start a foundation uh, because we want to invest not only money, Um, but our resources and our time into other particularly female entrepreneurs. Um, And, you know, as a side note, it's so funny because on TikTok, I think I made a comment about us being female entrepreneurs. And so many guys um, said to us, why do you have to highlight the fact that you're female entrepreneurs? And I said, when did we get to the point where adjectives are no longer okay to use, right? Right. Part of the reason why we highlight that is because only 6% of all inventions and patents are to our women led 6%. And so that is a fact that in the right tone, obviously we're not putting it in anybody's faces, but we are proud of the fact that we are part of a very small minority of women 
who A, invented a product and B, got it taken to market. And so all of that to say, we want to invest back into other women inventors, women entrepreneurs, um, to really be able to help them, um, you know, and empower them to be able to um, get what we didn't get along the road. And um, so again, just be the change that you want to see. And so for me, that's what I'm thinking of. That's on my radar of what's what's in the future. Yeah. And so it w- along with that investment, we have a, a roadmap of products uh, that we intend to take to market. We have a roadmap of accessories to go with it. So we're, you know, building, building a brand, but just building um, products that people, uh, multi-use products that people can use in their quality products in the market. And so we do have a roadmap of products, both um, for the current product we have, the Wander, and then for the medical space as well as the military space. So we're we're we'll, we will expand our product line um, significantly once this funding comes in. Awesome, that's great. So, do you have any anyone you follow in this space? Anyone who has helped you along the way or to to get you know through tough times? that you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, not necessarily in this place space, but I, I mean, my mentor that I had um, back in the day when I was, my background's occupational therapy and um, my mentor was James McGee. And I would not be here today in this position if it wasn't for him to give me the springboard into trusting in me and building businesses. And so he gave me, even though I had a restaurant and a catering business before I met him, um, you know, he gave me the opportunities to learn business, to grow businesses um, in the out, I mean, in the healthcare space. Uh, so, you know, with, without him uh, giving me and, and, and believing in me more, he saw something in me that, I didn't see it myself. And that that's a, that means a lot. And my dad even asked him years ago, he's like, what did you see in Stacy? You know, that that you trusted her to build a home care business, to work in technology for you, to build a, an adult day center focused. And he's like, she she had something that no one else had. And I had never seen it. She was, she wore it, she likes, I love wearing dresses, but I didn't mind putting on my boots my work boots and getting the job done. And, and, and so he saw a light in me that, that he was able to ignite, Hmm. you know, he saw the pilot light, he was able to put the fuel to it, to make it, make it happen. So to me, I mean, like he will forever be my mentor. Hmm. And I I think, I think for me, um, again, I love thinking about this question, but for me, the first that comes to mind is Stace um, and our team. Um, literally I, and I mean, I could get really emotional about this because I I grew up, like Stacey said, in a family of five kids and a mom and dad. And so I'm used to having a team of people around me. Um, and that's where I get my energy and the team that we have, which includes my brother, one of my brothers, um, and Stace and a few other just rock stars, um, that I would hundred percent not be where I am today without them. And so for me not to give them a shout out, just feel, feels crazy. So thank you, Stace. And my team's listening. I mean, well, now I feel bad. Well, no, I, <laughs> I feel for both of us. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for saying me. Yeah. I was thinking it, but I was thinking beyond you. <laughs> where I knew, where I knew them. That's right. So yeah. So this was this was a lot of fun. It was really interesting to hear a story because I know that uh, I can already tell how many people you are inspiring right now, how many people you inspire with your TEDx talk, how many people you inspire every time you tell your story, even if it's on your website, like uh only reading it, it's inspiring and hearing it from you guys. It's it's awesome. So I wanted to thank you for being here on the show. And before you go, uh, why don't you tell the audience where they can go to learn more about YouTube and the company? Yeah, so our website is easy. It's just omegear, G-E-A-R.com. 
Um, and then from that, we're on, follow us on TikTok. It's just at OME Gear or Instagram, Facebook, um, or follow me, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm really um, active on LinkedIn, um, which is how we met, right, Brian? Yes. Um, so yeah, so follow me on LinkedIn, request to follow, and um, those those are the main ways. Awesome. If you're listening to or watching this episode, uh, feel free to scroll down if you're already on the website and you will see all the show notes, including the links uh, she just mentioned. And if you're not there, go to um, the DTCinsider.com, click on the episode, and then you will find everything we are mentioning right now. Uh, Stacy, Jules, it was a pleasure to have you on. Thanks a lot for being here. Yeah, thank yeah, you thank so much. You so much it was the pleasure was ours. So thank you. This episode was brought to you by BSR Digital. We help DTC brands grow through paid ads and email marketing campaigns. If you'd like us to help your business grow, head on over to bsrdigital.com and schedule a call with us.